What would happen if a ship caught fire and sunk at sea? Could it be brought back from the depths using ping pong balls? Well, Jimmy, your years as a captain of a ship down in the Caribbean is going to serve you well for this myth, ping pong ball salvage. Yeah, it actually seems pretty familiar to me because in those days I formed a salvage company and we actually raised a sunken sailboat using garbage bags just by filling one bag up at a time. And this is actually pretty similar except we're going to be using thousands and thousands of ping pong balls to do it. These? To raise a ship? Yeah. Off the bottom of the ocean? That's the myth. Salvage companies typically use large flotation bags which are filled with air on the ocean floor. A slightly different technique was used to raise part of the Titanic's hull in 1998. The massive piece weighed in at 20 tons and took five giant bags to lift, each filled with 27,000 litres of lightweight propane. But in the 1940s, Donald Duck and his nephews had the ingenious idea of using ping pong balls for underwater salvage. Now, the duck's clever plan will be put into action by a pair of quacks. You know, one of the first questions that comes to my mind, Jamie, is how much buoyancy does a ping pong ball have, and actually, how much space a whole bunch of ping pong balls occupies. Huh. <laughs> what he's trying to say is that they'll need some statistics before they can even consider quacking this one. Like, how many ping pong balls will lift how much weight in water? I'm going to zero out my digital scale. Then I'm going to fill this top cup with exactly one pound of buckshot and then see how many ping pong balls it takes to negate that one pound of buckshot. If it takes too many balls, this myth may be busted before they start. Jamie's skeptical about Adam's methods. Are we going to get like a 30 foot long tong for the real thing? Um, it's actually, it takes a fair amount of force to push it down there. The math says 15 balls. So what's the problem? You don't believe the math? Well, we never believe the math on Mythbusters. Ah! Oh. That's great, Adam. I'll see you later. <sighs> Let me know when you get that all worked out. Luckily, Adam's ego is far from fragile. According to the myth, a sunken ship can be salvaged by a shrewd scattering of ping pong balls. The Mythbusters have their sunken ship, they're not short of balls, and they've designed a dispensing rig. This myth may just float. I think it's gonna work, it's gonna be close. With only half the ping pong balls in place so far, Jamie heads back down to the boat. But before long, Myth Tannic 2 seems to be straining at the leash. Up above, the excitement mounts. I'm cautiously optimistic that it's maybe an hour until this boat breaks the surface and confirms this myth. Take that cautious comment and throw it to the wind because even as Adam speaks, Myth Tannic 2 stirs, then slowly rises from her watery grave. Way ahead of schedule, the ping pong balls float the Mythbusters boat. The nine hour marathon salvage is over. <laughs> we succeeded, <laughs> of all things. Uh, we got the mechanic to the surface using uh, about 25, about 27,000 ping pong balls, all told, uh, which is a lot less than I thought we'd need. But she's on the surface. We did it. The boys had calculated that it would take at least 50,000 ping pong balls to raise Myth Tannic 2. But they did it with just over half that number. Myth Tannic 2 is winched onto the dock and the boys gather for a debrief. Oh, you got it, man. You got it. Okay. 
I thought we were going to do it, Jimmy, but I didn't realize we were going to do it that easily. It didn't really seem like it took that many. The, none of the compartments were packed like I thought we were going to need to really get every last nook and cranny filled for this to work. Well, we had to use less because the fiberglass was more buoyant. And the wood. And Something the wood. we didn't take into account at the beginning. Adam, the pump. Did it work 